Welcome to Smartacular. Here we are again. Me, Jazz, and him, Mass Hobo. Hello. I know, he's full of all kinds of exciting greetings, as you can tell. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, um, I really feel like, I like the weird uh, gaming music that starts us. It feels like some kind of weird video game. And I like bit. it. And I was like... I was talking to a friend of mine who I sing with, and I'm like, I really want a theme song that has the word smart-tacular, you know, in it, because I think that would be really cool. And and we could sing it, and, and she goes, yeah, what what rhymes with smart-tacular? We'd have to ha- have some rhyming words. And I'm like, I, fart-tacular? I don't, I don't, I mean, what? Just, if you're don't from you the South like me, you could say Count tacular? Dracula? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it, already this is shaping up to be an amazing Solid. opening theme song. I mean, we've got Smartacular, Fartacular, Dracula. Yep. Dr- Dracula. Count Dracula. That's great. That Count I, Dracula feller. I, going around eating up all them feller, ladies. That sneaky feller. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be working on that. And maybe the tens out there. That you know, they might have some ideas. They could send them to our yeah, email. Can, yeah, it should be. It'll be in the description, but it'll be smarttacular yeah. at gmail dot com. Yeah, yeah. So nothing just, tricky you know, here. If you can think, yeah, we're very simple people. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, there's not a lot of layers on this onion. There's no. not. It's a very, very small layers, small amount. So yeah, if you have any ideas, you know, send them in. And if you want to give us feedback, you can do that too. We, we may or may not. If it's negative, really I'll delete it. So we won't worry about it. Yeah, too much. if it's negative, we'll delete it and we'll get a little bit mad. Probably sometimes I get a little angry. We might even read it. Who knows? <laughs> I get I get a little spicy with a little pepper emoticon. Yeah. I can get violent. <laughs> Little, we're just grabby tagging stabby. back on some yeah just a little grabby savvy so so you might want to think about it before you send it in you might want to layer that that maybe constructive criticism and a big pillowy layer of love and chocolate and good stuff and then you know somewhere just like one small tiny sentence say something negative and that'll be fine i can handle that um, but I think we have a fun episode today. I've noticed like this is amazing, but when we do a little bit of research, it just seems to make more sense. Maybe. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But then it then you gotta research. And then people think you're putting in work for it. We're not working that hard. Don't get us wrong. It's really not that much work or re- and or research. But I think this next subject is kind of I, it's kind of a fun one. And it's still actually before Halloween, so for yes. us, it's going to be like, oh, this is really it's whatever. It's going to be late, but when but, people listen to you know, it, it, that's just how it later. goes. But it's still relevant, and it's. Um, I'll let you introduce it this time because I'm just going to be that person who is okay. mon- monogamous. Yeah, thank. You. I think <laughs> magnanimous. There you that's go. the real word. There it is. <laughs> magnanimous. I figured it out after six episodes. <laughs> so, or <laughs> seven. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, well, today we're starting off with what really scares people. Top ten phobias. You know, being a week before spooky, spooky day. Yeah, and I always think that fear-based stuff is interesting. Anyway, I mean, let's face it. Like people like scary movies. They like to get scared on their terms. But there are these are ones that I think are not on people's terms. These are just ones that are for real. People don't like this shit. Yeah. Um. And the first one, um, now this one, we'll, we'll, we'll of course put in our own two cents on if it bothers us or not. Uh, the dentist. I, I don't, I've never had a really bad, horrific dental experience, so I don't yeah, really mine have haven't, that. Mine haven't been too bad. I had one where I wasn't numb quite enough, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, I didn't say anything either because he was pretty far into doing it and I was just like, I just grinned and bear it until he was done because it was like... If he stops now, he's got to stop, clean, then get another needle and all this other stuff. I was just like, let's just push forward and, and be done with it. So, I I had a temporary crown fall off, oh. and um, that that's painful. I bet is not okay. It is the end of the world, is what it feels like. I and it was like at night, and there was nobody available, so I literally had to find something to like push gum there. it back. You know, push in the, to 
because it's a raw nerve that's yeah, exposed, exposed when that yeah. little. So I just found out at my last dental. That was a few years ago. That was very traumatic for me. I found out that they have to do another one, and oh, I told the doctor. No. By the way, the dentist is a hot guy. He's a super hot guy. Like I do not mind him being inside my mouth at all. I'm sure. <laughs> And I don't know. Anyway, he's cute. And so I have a hard time saying no to him. If he was some gross, disgusting, ugly old dude, I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not doing this again. But he's cute. And so I was paying attention this time instead of just writing it off dismissively. And I said, I had a little bit of PTSD the last time when my crown came off. So I really, can we just do a cavity? And he goes, okay, so here's what's going to happen. And he like pats me on the arm and he shows me the x-ray. He goes, your tooth is too thin and it will literally crack and rot out of your head. <laughs> I mean, it's like, if you don't, we can't do a filling. Yeah, there's and, not enough tooth there to hold it in. And- no. And so he was explaining that to me in very nice ways. And he goes, or we could extract the tooth and you'll just have a big gap in the, you know, in the bottom of your, it's a huge molar. God. So he goes, that takes up a lot of space, you know? And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to get through my PTSD. That didn't really help me very much. And, and I, I, I'm going in next month, so I'll let you know how it goes. But hopefully, you know, I just told him, I said, listen, don't ma- don't let it fall off this time, and then I'll be fine with it. Super glue that, you gorilla know? glue that shit if you have to. Yeah, duct tape it. I don't give a shit, but make sure it stays in there. That was the problem. I wasn't upset getting my first crown because I didn't know it was going to be a fucking nightmare. So... So anyway, uh, the only thing that I have a fear of that causes me a lot of uh, phobia is the dental bill because my insurance is not good and it is expensive to go to the dentist. So that would be my main fear Right, is just how much it costs. It's crazy. It can add up real fucking fast. Um, So number two, dogs. Yeah, I'm not. A, A fear of dogs. I'm not really. I can't. I'm I not scared of. There's one. there's been a couple dogs I've seen walking around before where I've kept my eye on them, but they didn't make me immediately like, oh god, this yeah. like I don't lock up when I see a dog. I just watch it, and if it looks like something's not right, I put myself in a way to make it either inside if I'm headed somewhere or if my car is yeah. nearby, I can get inside that. Like, but it's not a. It's but that's only if it's like if it's somebody's dog on a leash or in a yard. I don't worry about it that much. Yeah. Like seeing a dog and doesn't I, I make can me understand. freak out, but of course that's because I fucking love dogs. So maybe that's you know I'm not going to have a fear. Yeah, of I them, do so. too. I I think it's smart to have a healthy fear of any unknown animal. Yeah, period. yeah. Just you know you don't know. But um, this uh, picture that they used for the dog, we'll we'll put the link so you can see it. This is a very raggedy, it, snaggletooth dog that doesn't even that looks photoshopped it that picture look, looks like, like somebody's it, throwing the dog a treat and he's going to chomp down on it in midair but they photoshop yeah. the treat out of the air so you can just see his teeth coming down and he doesn't his it's eyes not, don't his eyes don't portray anger or aggression they just like he's like oh boy they're no. taking my picture again for some stupid ass article or whatever it is you know that's what it but looks. his nose is at a wonky angle if you look at his nostrils the door yeah that's just, what i'm you saying guys look at the picture it looks like he's when you look his at head is turning a direction yeah you just look at it it looks like a wonky dog this we'll include the like link in the in the in the info yeah, box Yeah, you've got to look at this but there there's i'll tell you i think it's just like i think dog he's catching bark. a treat if you don't i think he's trying to catch yeah. food or something they got him to do that for the picture and they photoshopped the treat out if you if you don't understand dogs, like if you're not a dog person, here's the thing: dogs have they they want to be part of a pack, and they they talk to each other and they communicate by barking and doing different kinds of barks and different kinds of wagging their tail and and you know scrunching down and being submissive. There's all this language that they're giving you, and if you don't speak dog or if you're not familiar with dogs, it ain't gonna make any sense to you. So a loud bark doesn't necessarily mean anything bad. It can be playful, and a lot of people just take it as, oh, it's being aggressive. aggressive. You know, it's, a mean it's doing dog. this. And so my thing is, is you just should never approach an animal you don't know. You shouldn't try to pet something. And if somebody tells you, and I'll tell you this because I have a little mean aggressive chihuahua uh Shit slash rat terrier called a rat cha and he's very aggressive because he was mistreated for four years and he was a rescue so i tell people all the time when we're out trying to walk him 
um, in public, they'll want to run right up and pet him. And I'm, we're always like, no, you, you cannot pet him. And they're like, well, he's such a cute little dog. No, he'll, he'll fucking freaking bite you. Go for your jugular. He, yeah, he thinks anybody who's a stranger who's not in his pack is not okay with him. So we have to be ve- like very, you know, just because something looks cute, don't go put your hand in its mouth. That's not smart. I think, I think fucking tigers are cute, but I'm not going to jump in the fucking cage with one. Like, that, you are so smart. That right, is right. such a good choice. <laughs> Very smart. I want to high five. I want to high five a silverback gorilla too, but don't. I don't want him to but get shot. Gonna. I don't want to get him shot. I don't want to get him shot like Harambe. Rest in peace. But right. That's what everything. Right. I, you know what? We'll finish the fears. I don't want to get on it. I could talk about that forever. Yeah, I mean, let's just say any animal, dog, cat, whatever, just just like use common sense and but but. For actually having fears, I'm sure people do. Yeah, I know, I've known and, people that are deathly afraid of dogs. Like, yeah, yeah. I and just I'm didn't just get like, it. I wasn't trying to be person, mean. So. I was just like, actually, I do have a story. There was a back when me and my wife were still married. Our neighbor's uh, kid was deathly afraid of dogs. Like, our dog, you'd bring her in and she'd bark just because she didn't know you. That's how the. That's how I want my dogs to be. And he was like. The kid almost literally shit his pants. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure he bumped cloth, but she wasn't barking oh. at him, and she was just barking because somebody knew was in the house that she didn't know. But right. he, I've never seen like anybody. So I don't know. I guess when he was even small, because he was fairly young then. I'm sure. I guess something happened to him before. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I think part of it is they also got given a dog by a friend, and he was not aggressive. He was just real hyper. Because he was a quarter, he was a quarter wolf, mm-hmm. and these people did not need a dog that was even close to any percent wolf. They just did not yeah. take care of the dog. It's the way. Very and they didn't. They weren't bad at taking care of the dog. They just didn't take care of the dog's needs correctly. A dog like that, a high energy dog that's part wolf, like it's yeah, it's like three quarters husky and the rest is wolf. Like the one of the parents was half wolf, so. You know, I, I think the dad was happy. And so a... he used to come in our yard. He would dig, dig. Mm-hmm. And he oh, dug into our yard drink. one day. And they were like so mad at him. And I was like, I don't care. He came over and played with my dog. And I was like, they were, I was like, oh, there's a hole in the fence. I was like, he must have dug through. They were like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, blah, blah. And I was like, what? He's, a, he's just trying to have fun. He's just bored. I was like, he just, anything. And he knew I was over there and I'd always play with him and stuff. So he would always come over to my yard. He chewed he, up. He chewed uh, up a I, water I, sprinkler when we were at home one day in our yard. It was like a fifteen dollar yeah. water sprinkler. They replaced it again. They were like, "Oh my god!" And I was just like, "He's just a puppy. He's a big puppy because he's part wolf. He's a husky. Yeah. He's a big ass dog." I don't know whatever happened to him, but he was a sweet dog. He just needed somebody that understood that kind of dog. I worked at a. I, I didn't work. I volunteered at a wolf sanctuary, and almost all of the. Uh, animals that lived there were hybrids and hybrids uh we could do a whole podcast on wolves i know a lot about wolves uh but hybrid dogs the reason it's uh not great is it's very unpredictable even when you're mixing this much of a dog with this much of a wolf yeah you, um, still... you don't know if you're gonna get a wolf that looks like that acts like a dog or if you're gonna get a dog <laughs> like that a looks like a dog but acts like a wolf yeah. and it's very unpredictable and the digging is a huge they, that's very boredom. common that's one behavior of those they're just bored. and they're smart I mean wolves are very smart so anyway we could do a whole show on wolves but their hybrids are usually euthanized most of them are euthanized before the age of five because people do not know what they're getting into. Nope. They, they think, oh, it's say, cool. Oh, I have it's a part like, wolf. It's like Game of Thrones. It's a cool, it's a status symbol thing. And then they and realize that dog ate my work. entire fucking yard, tried to eat yeah. six of our cats. I'm like, well, yeah, you have a wild ass dog and you put it in a two square foot yard. What do you think was going to happen? And they can climb. There's all kinds of things. Yeah, we, people don't. We will. We'll yeah. have to do a show on wildlife. We'll, we'll do fine. one. We'll pencil now, this, that in. Now, this next... <laughs> pencil that into a schedule, please. Thank you. Um, the next one is one I have. So, oh, or I had. Uh, I can say I got over it. Frightful flight. Fear of flying. How are you? How did you get uh, over it? Did you, did you get over it through medication by being out during the flight? No. Oh. I did try... Just boozing it up was usually how I coached the whole flight. Um, But 
this is a very interesting one because uh, this one comes up often as the number one fear of people. Because uh, I looked at some other research, okay. not just this article. Ooh. So fear of flying apparently is the number one fear that or phobia that people have. Uh, so I think in general, most people's phobias have a lot to do with not feeling like they have control uh, is one. So anytime where you're feeling like you're not in control of a situation, there's a good chance you're going to feel anxious about it. So my thoughts after going over in my head for so long, why, why did I have this fear? Uh, it was almost exclusively when I had, when my kids were younger and I'd have to fly somewhere and they weren't with me. My fear was if something happened to me, what would happen to them? It was much more about that. And what it is, is when a plane wrecks, it's it, when a plane crashes, it's a big deal. Like, of course, every year, so many more people die in auto. You're, you're much more likely to have an accident in your car than you are oh, on you're a You're more flight, likely to like you know? get hit going to get your mail than you are to die in a plane crash, you know? Yeah, it's so small of a percentage, but it's such a big deal when it happens and it gets so much it's, attention. It's, and it's usually a big number, like 300 people were on board or something. Yeah. So it just catches more. It seems bigger than it is. Well, there's been like and, three plane crashes in like the last three months. Well, and there's something one that was pointed in, There was actually one uh, in Texas yesterday. Yeah. I think it was a small it, like it, Cessna. It was like a little two-seater thing, I think. They crashed. But, I think they were trying to land, and they they were in near an airstrip when they crashed. So, and the thing is, is it actually, if you look at it as they don't publish every single car wreck that happens, you don't see that on the it, nightly there's news. There's not enough. Fucking you don't time see that on day. national news to do that. So when we see it on national news, it feels like a big deal. But that also means it's so rare. That it can actually make the national news. Okay. So, uh, so it's like when you start being, you know, more uh, just practical and, yeah. and use your common sense, it kind of, and it's weird, you know, you're up in the air. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay. <laughs> I'm I did not, not a physicist. I did not know this about that plane crash. It was two days ago. And, mm -hmm. um, well, now it says uh, October, so it must have been updated two days ago or something. Anyway, it's almost a week ago now, judging by the publication of this article, that the plane that crashed in Texas, it was a private plane. There's 21 people on board. Everyone walked off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That happens too. And the the sometimes... video of the, the video of the plane, it's on fire. Like, it's not like a just, it's yeah. sitting on the ground. It was burnt. But they said everybody mm -hmm. walked away on that private plane. See, which that's is the other even thing more is, rare. Usually, somebody gets hurt and can't like it, they may not die, but they're always talking about oh, this many people were hurt or whatever. People, twenty one people walk. So that's a combination of really fucking lucky, and your pilot was probably pretty bad. Like that pilot knew exactly what he was doing to put people down safely. Like that takes yeah skill and a lot of and, fucking skill. At, and my um, husband, the theoretical physicist, has explained things to me like, really, when the plane is up in the air, the, the engines, it's already up in flight and it is gliding at that point. It doesn't even really need the engines anymore. So it's like you're when when that shows it in the movies and they lose lose an engine you can you can land a plane planes are designed the there's all with kinds of things fail safes like yeah, the end, it's they put four engines glider. on a plane and that shit can fly with like one or two depending on the size yeah. of the plane and engines and blah 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 there's a lot of nuance but it's they, more like if you have brakes and and landing gear is real important yeah but it's just the aerodynamics the physics of why planes fly and how they do like when i started educating myself on it. it's like any fear you have if you educate yourself on it and the other thing for me is when my son turned 18 it just kind of magically went away because i just like well now that little shit's in charge of itself yeah so so i think there are people that have like uh, my my fear was much more related to my children than it was yeah really it's too. not really the flight itself it's not i like got in a plane scared you it was like what happens if and i'm sure yeah you could say that that I mean, you could say that fear about anything, like getting in your car, you could have had it. But it's for you, you're driving the car. You've done it since you were 16 or whatever, almost literally every day. Like, it's one of those things. If you flew everywhere every day, I'm sure you'd probably be like, eh, fuck it. You know, it's whatever, dude. You know? Yeah. 
Well, and, and even us driving in our cars is a very yeah. false sense of control and security because, of course, somebody Some asshole can, do can fucking that jump we have... the curve or drinking and driving, yeah. being so, on their phone. Like We can have a whole very dark getting their, and depressing... Getting their dick sucked, whatever is happening, and then... I, wow, that went to a really naughty place. Okay. It yeah. happens. People get in wrecks because of it all the time, I'm sure. I know. Stupid You be driving and head. you fucking bust a nut and slam on the brakes or hit the gas, and all of a sudden... You got to explain to the cops why you jumped a curb and hit a telephone pole. Or a person. Yeah, or both. (laughs) That was crossing the street. Some innocent bystander. Just got wiped out. Yeah, you don't want to have to say that. Yeah. (laughs) Goodness. Okay, uh, moving on. Thunder and lightning. I don't even want to talk about this because it's just not. I, I don't understand that. My it's kid, the my kid used to be scared of it, but that's because she didn't know what it was, and it was loud. Like that's like thunder and lightning. That's like being scared of any loud noises and bright lights. Like I don't know. That shit doesn't bother um, me. The, now, the thund- next, yeah, now we're, tornadoes we're, scare me slightly more, but even then, it's like well, yeah. I'll go sit in the fucking hallway again and you wait just it feel out. Like you're in timeout. In yeah. the middle of your house, yeah. in the structurally sound part of your house. Um, thunder and lightning, yeah, okay. We're sorry for you people who are afraid of that. It's loud. It's very scary. Put on some uh, earphones the, and close your eyes. You'll be fun. Yeah. Write it up. Listen to this. Go put on an episode yeah. of Smarktacular when it's thunder and lightning. Just distract yourself, you know? Uh, the next one, the dark. Yeah, little kids are afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of the dark sometimes, like when it's someplace I'm not familiar with like if i'm outdoors why is the forest so scary at night but it's completely fine during the day so there's it's a it's a uh a biological thing in our brains we weren't built for night when we were were yeah when we were in the days of yore that was a bad time for us to be out so so we've just got this inherent like biological that's why we carry fire everywhere yeah, we wanted to see, you know, me, I, I'm like, I'll totally step in a pothole. I know I will. Yeah. I know I will. I'm that person who steps in potholes. So I and need just, some yeah, light. The dark and, and my fear the is that I'm going to so hurt much. myself because yeah. I can't see shit. That's all. That's it. Harrowing heights. They used a big word, harrowing. Yeah, what's, not, not just that's like, too much. Like, what, what's harrowing to some? To some people, harrowing could be like getting on top of a ladder. And for other people, it could yeah. be like playing around on top of the Empire State Building. It just depends. Stories. Yeah. That's a real subjective I, title. I, think but I get it. I, it's- I get, I have that when it's real, 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 real high up. And because it, it messes with my sense of You get of that like vertigo. vertigo. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel a little wobbly when I get up too high. And it, it gives me that icky feeling in my stomach. So I can kind of see that. But here's my ideas on that. I just don't fucking do that. Like I try not to go to the 400th floor and look out the fucking window. Like, like okay, it's I, not my jam. So I don't do it. You know, I'm not the hugest I don't fan stand of, out on a ledge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the hugest <laughs> fan know? of heights, but I don't know. There is something cool about being up that high. Like, what I, eh. what I skydive probably. What I really, yeah, I think I might. Hmm. I it would be. Du- I've had so many dreams where I've fallen from really high Dying. up. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> those are always like it's so weird. But yeah, and I, I mean, I'd probably do it. But yeah, I can like I get that same feeling. You're just like you get that weird reaction, like because we're not built to be that high. We're not. We're just as humans, we are not creatures that are supposed to be up yeah, that high now we like being up off the ground because we know there's creepy crawly shit on the ground that wants to like not wants to but we could step on and get hurt or kill you outright so we elevate I ourselves feel- off the ground that's why our houses aren't dirt floors anymore because we realize that's not good i feel like there's a happy medium between yeah. 14 stories up and you know up off the ground i feel yeah, like there is a um, and, and I want to tell you right now, because we are on Smartacular and we're always very open and honest about everything that's happening. My AirPods want to go dead right now. So right in the middle of our talk, you know what I'm going to do? What? You're going to plug in your... I'm going to put in my other headset. But didn't I, didn't I talking, before all of this started? I did. Didn't I did. Okay. I was going to say, I, I told you to charge them and you gave me a snarky ass response. Because <laughs> last did. time I had to clean up... I had to spend four hours of my life cleaning up audio. Oh, jeez. 
Like you, did you have something more exciting to do than that? That sounds fun. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I don't understand. Okay, it says I'm retasking. We'll see. Hopefully that didn't we'll break your recording. It shouldn't re- break your recording, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, you probably uh, have to change uh, it in Discord. I'm going to see if I can do this, and I'm sorry you're having to hear this, so we'll talk about the next one, which is... Uh, Scare, was it scary it's, space? No, that's other people. It's people. People are the worst. I totally agree with that, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of rigmarole that has to happen here. I'm very nope. sorry. I apologize, and it's not awesome. You talk for a minute while I do this. Okay, you so this one's other people. people in there. Start. Mainly, I think they're talking about not necessarily the other human, but being in front of a lot of people is what it, they make it sound like. Mm-hmm. You know, so getting up, talking in front of people and things that can be taught out unless you absolutely have like a crippling social anxiety fear. And that's you're never you that takes a lot of time to even be able to become functional in those sort of situations. I'm sure I don't have one. Uh, luckily, I mean, like I just like talking to people. I've always been that way. My ex-wife used to say I, there wasn't a place I could go where I didn't have a new friend, essentially. There was one time I remember one time I was pumping gas somewhere and I talked to this other guy was pumping gas and she got in and when I got back in the car she's like you know him I was like no he was like oh because it sounded like you know that guy forever I was like no I just I don't mind talking to people for the most part so now maybe if I I've only given a handful of presentations and stuff in my life most of them were of course school it's where they make you start doing that I mean, if I I can obviously talk in front of people obviously but um i i aside from like public speaking in front of uh people it's like just people in general like strangers and people i don't know i just i i avoid that i don't like to people very much i don't like to get people with people that i don't know and i, don't I try like to, to avoid... people with people you don't people yeah that feel it feels like a very icky kind of peopling to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I just against, don't, you don't know. Yeah, I'm not against meeting new people. Sometimes it's like, I think we all, I think everybody kind of deals with that in some sense. I think other people are better at forcing themselves into that situation so they get over it quicker. Um, it's the same I mean, thing as with dogs. Yeah, you and don't I, here's know, the thing I wouldn't, you can't predict. I wouldn't have a bunch of the friends I have if I didn't just talk to random people occasionally. Um, I always get to talk to random people, and I think that's the problem. I think problem a lot of people just randomly talk to you. Yes, that's the thing. I have this. Um, you don't have RBF. I don't, and I should try to do that more often. You should just look constipated I, all the time. <laughs> like I a apparently prospector. I I've talked about this before, but I try to put what I call the mask of neutrality on my face, that's not where do I just you any look favors. like. Meh. But what it really means to people is, oh. She's not busy. I can talk. Yeah, she's not busy. I can explain to um, her in great detail over one message about my weird sexual fantasies. She's cool or with on it. the bus, yeah. on public transportation, sitting next to her. I feel completely comfortable telling her about cheating on my husband with his best friend. That's fine. I yeah, can tell her that. Nobody she's NBD. not going to tell anybody. Yeah, so that kind of stuff happens to me all the time. So that might be why I've lost my faith yeah, and hope that. in people is I, I i've heard a lot of things people have it or they'll go or they'll be like can i tell you something it's like please don't i swear <laughs> to god please i beg of you do not and they'll be like anyway anyway <laughs> so just, uh, i was letting my anyway, neighbor just, butt fuck me and uh yes and you're like can you exactly. just please i need like uh, this is now you're making me keep a secret, and and then I wouldn't. Like, I'd be like, I, I'd be like, what's your name? Where do you live? Or, like, or again, it's like, can I tell you a secret? No, no, I don't want your secrets. No. I don't even like mine. I don't, I don't like secrets. Period. And I promise and I you, like I'm, I'm going to tell yours way the hell before I tell mine. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to tell every. I'm not. A, do I have secret keeper written on me? It's a, I don't want to keep a secret. It feels gross. So don't. So don't ask me to do it. But yeah, or or. And then you'll say that, like, no, I, I don't feel comfortable anyway. And then they just keep they make you complicit you. in their in their 
bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and then if you don't say anything, they feel like you're they agreeing to, with them. They, or they need to tell you more. Yeah. And it's like, none of those are what I'm trying to get out of this. What I wanted was for you to never speak to me in the first place. That's what I wanted. And that did not happen because my mask of neutrality failed me. Again, you can't you can't be neutral because that means you're either you, that's just too open. You you're gonna have to pick. You're gonna have to go to yeah. RBF. You're gonna have to develop an RBF for public. I'll try. I don't I don't want permanent wrinkles from that kind of face. But geez, I know I I am a person when I'm like in a grocery store or at a Target or at Best Buy or at Ulta or name whatever. <laughs> <laughs> store it is no matter how i'm dressed literally they always think that i work there like if you make the mistake of going to target and you have a red shirt oh, on, yeah, yeah. people are gonna ask you where shit is i've had that happen so at best buy that. when they used to wear the red shirts yeah or if you're at best buy now it's a blue shirt yeah it used to be buy. red i think yeah but so I, be careful i was wearing a shirt like that one day and i was wearing khakis because i was off work and some old uh-huh. dude was asking me some old dude was asking me questions, and I didn't say a one word that I didn't work though. I just helped the old dude out, and yeah, because they were already steering him in the wrong direction. I was like, "Look, sir, you don't need that computer." I was like, "Just get this one. It's what you, it'll work better, and you'll save yourself some money." Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing is, if I do know, because I am a kind of nice person. I'll be like, oh, it's on aisle eight. Because sometimes I'm at that place wherever it is enough to actually know where stuff is. So I'm like, fuck it. They think I work at Target. I've actually helped somebody find an aisle before. I'm like, hang on. Well, that's not good. Let me help you. Let me assist you to that aisle. Yeah, I'll help. Let me just. I didn't know where it was. So I was like, you know what? We can find it together. You know what? Whenever anybody says we're bad people, which they will, I'm sure we'll get smartacular emails saying, you're, you're horrible. You guys yeah. are just horrible. But then we're going to be like, you know what, bitch? We totally help, help people randos. get to the aisle. They Randos who need to get to the goddamn bread aisle. We help them do that. And we help them buy computers. So just fuck it. Anyway, that's people. That's why we don't like them. There are some good people out there. That the, Some of our tens are good people. Yeah. You know, probably eight out of ten. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's a B. Good. <laughs> that's a B. <laughs> it's above average. Yeah. Um, scary spaces. Uh, and what they show here is an, an elevator. Yeah, an open elevator. Which elevators don't really it's scare an, me that much. I mean, at, at some point, if an elevator starts falling, now you're in you're inventored fear of flights territory. <laughs> yeah. Then you're you're on one of those other. Yeah, phobias you're on a different phobia about. now. And it, it says that there's uh, elevators, sporting events, bridges, public transportation, driving, shopping malls, and airplanes are are considered scary spaces. The mall? Okay. Just because I'm going to run into more people. But other than that, sporting events, more people. Again, I don't get these. Public transportation, I told you why. Right. The, the, everybody tries to. Well, and then you got the fucking weirdos on public transportation, like jacking off or whatever, and you're just like, man, I didn't. It's it's eight a.m. Man, I didn't. I'm still trying to process going to work. I don't. You know what? I'm just I'm just trying to get somewhere. I don't don't need need to see you getting somewhere in your pants. Yeah, that's not. They need need. a separate bus for that. And I think that people who ride the bus all the time like just get desensitized to that. And it kind of sucks because it's like. Man, that's... I'm like, is anybody else seeing? That? And everybody else is, is just it, like, what? Thank God they invented phones or books or whatever. Like, you know what? They're listening to Smart Tacular. Yeah, hopefully, you know, and they're like, we don't give a shit. And hopefully, about this what comes on at the doing. exact time where they bri- mm. they're not noticing somebody jerking it, and then bam, we mention it, and they're like, now I can't. That's all I can think about. I can't look around like and my, see what's my going buddy on did to me I'm in my scared. office. There's a there's a mini fridge in my office. We you know leftovers, food, whatever. And it, its compressor runs almost all the time because it's a little fridge. And so you hear that, that zzz, and it's, mm-hmm. since it's so close to me, it's going off all the time. And we were chit-chatting today. He was in my office, and he goes, what's that noise? And I was like, what noise? And he was like, that noise. And then I was like, oh, I think that's the fridge. And then that's all I could hear. I had become decent to the sound. And I was like, you son of a bitch, dude. That's all I hear now. And he started laughing. He was like, he was like I didn't know what it was from. And he was like, I thought it was in the ceiling because the way it echoes, it was going up the wall. And I was like, no. And I was like, I hadn't heard that noise in years. And now for the next half hour, that's all I hear. You know, that's maybe we're two steps above compressor noise instead of white noise. Yeah, We might be slightly better than listening to your compressor run all day, possibly. We could just record that for an hour and see which gets higher ratings. I'm sure the compressor will for some sort of ASMR thing. 
Yeah. Some of those I'm ASMR sure. things are kind of weird, but that's a whole other, that so, could be a whole other episode. So this scary spaces, I just think that I disagree and whatever. If you're afraid of scary spaces, just do your research and stop I mean, it. if it's a space for me, that falls more <laughs> under claustrophobia than like. Right. Because even like, in large crowds, be... you can feel claustrophobic because there's some, everything's close. And right. my, my ex-wife like had like have claustrophobia. claustrophobia. You couldn't like. She was like, I can't, yeah. if you shut the door on me in a closet, like so even the, even a big like walk-in closet, she's like, she would not have the door shut. Feels trapped. Yeah. yeah. If you and shut the door, she would immediately like go ape. Which that's, that's what it is. They're talking about agoraphobia. Yeah. That's where you're just afraid of going out of your house. Yeah. That's just leaving the um, house, which I don't have a fear of that, but I don't like doing it either. Yeah. Maybe an aversion, I don't, not a fear. I don't, well, because I, don't have a I might end fear, up on a bus. Like, Fuck. Or I might end up at Target with somebody asking me a favor or trying to tell me a secret. So, yeah, nobody wants to leave their house, especially during a pandemic. It's like, eh, I'll just hang out here. Um, so the next one, I I really feel a kinship with. It, it just calls it creepy crawlies. Which covers a and lot. That's a big. It's a, there's a big damn spider with that's, actual fur that's a tarantula. on its sticking out. We have those yeah, around here somewhere. I'm not sure which kind it is, what? but. I'm not going to be visiting you anytime soon. Though. I don't know. We have, that we have looks brown familiar. recluses. I forget, I forget what kind of tarantula it is. It's You don't really see them in the areas. I mean, it's more in like the desert areas, you know. I mean, they could be in the woods. I mean, I've seen a couple growing up. I've seen a handful of tarantulas that well, were about that interesting, big. Um, interesting. In a study that they did on human behavior, it says that they found that 11-month year old uh, not year old just 11 month old girls quickly learn to associate images of spiders and snakes with the fearful facial expressions and then baby boys didn't so it's it's maybe something to do with what sex you are you're more likely to have a a phobia with that interesting hmm. there's there's probably a reason like we as women who were having children and had to protect them maybe there's some kind of biological reason why this seemed fearful to us i look at that and i do I can tell you that I do not like it <laughs> at all. Honestly, out of all the spiders, tarantulas bug me the least. And I don't like I know things why. with fur on them. I know why they bug me the least, because they don't build webs. You're not going to run into a yeah, tarantula okay. in the middle of the night on your porch, unless it's on the ground, and then you're like, oh, dude, you can just go on. You can scoot them out of the way. They're not... It's rare that tarantulas are going to be aggressive, and the ones that are don't live anywhere near me. They're like South American freaking... Them big ass yeah. wandering spiders that will kill you in fifteen minutes, you know. There's and there, there's not, spiders there's... that are super aggressive, and it's like the funnel web spiders, the trapdoor yeah, spiders, the, the that... wandering spiders, and shit like that. They're aggressive; they'll come at you. I don't need no wandering spider; just wander away. Yeah, there. Um, we have brown recluses where I live, and Fuck you can things. die we, from that. We get them. Yeah. We have them too. Uh, wood Fuck spiders, and uh, yeah. So there, there, um, there are mean nasty spiders and mm -hmm. i don't like them and i just want them to have their their place out in nature away from me they do not need to come into my home they're not yeah. welcome they're not invited as as are uh no other people either it's the same thing i don't invite i'd let the spider either. in first <laughs> i'll take my chances with right the spider um they have too many eyes i don't trust that i don't trust the amount of eyes they have i don't trust the amount of legs they have there's Everything about that to me says no. It just what about, says What about the little no. jumping spiders that are cute? They should die. <laughs> I don't like them. They're not cute. There's no cuteness. Don't even try to cute it up with Charlotte's Web. I didn't. No, trust no, no. no. Her. She was. She was the dangerous spider. You don't look. They got little cute jumping spider. Look at him. He's cute as shit. Look at this. Mm mm. Mm mm. No, I don't want to look. I don't like them. Oh God! That's, See, no. Look, he's got little eyelashes. Okay, okay you're gonna put that picture. We've got to give a link to that too, because that is horrific. It's, it's, it's a little tiny. It's got, no, it's got too many. Did you know there's a whole anyway. little animation called? There's they they did somebody did like a Pixar style animation of a little jumping spider like that. His name is mm -hmm. Lucas the Spider, and they did like I think they got their kid to voice him, and he does like. And it's like okay, how to be cool. Like he's like, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I just like eating bugs. And and they gave him a little cute voice. And he's got big old eyes, like cartoon eyes. I saw years ago there was a meme, and it's one of my favorite memes. It's of an ugly spider, but they did a 
a meme and it was always the spider being the good guy. Yeah. And so he'd be up in the corner and he would say, hey, oh, look, it's nice to see you again. And, oh, you're such a great, it's, I love living here. Are we going to have a little talk? Hey, why are you coming why at you me rolling with up that, that can of hairspray? Yeah. yeah, why are you coming at me with that can of hairspray? And I was like, I've done that. I have hairsprayed a spider before. That's I Lucas. Cannot lie. Look at that. Ugh. Its eyes are too many. Um, so those memes were great. The spider uh, and some of it was, yeah. Why are you coming at me with that newspaper? Rolled up newspaper. Yeah, it's um, that's how I feel about them. They need to be. I I understand they do their thing and that they're good for nature. So I'm not opposed. I don't want to. I don't want to eliminate them from the earth or anything like that. I just want them to understand that they live outside. That's it. <laughs> that's all. Just you live outside. I live inside. You're not my me casa is not your casa. It's not. It's a simple thing. And then they end it with snakes. Um, slithering snakes. Are there snakes? What? Why is it slithering? How about just all snakes? I don't like any of them. <laughs> Again, whether they slither or not. And the one that they picked literally it's has venom dripping. He's, the venom is dripping out of the end of his fangs. Oh, excuse me. I thought we were supposed to silence our phones before the movie started. It's it's I I can't I don't even know how to silence it because it's my watch it's my eye watch. Uh, you guys got a little Shit's Creek theme there. Um, Shit's Creek, we're giving you credit for that uh, song. Please don't sue us. Whoever owns the rights to that that was unintentional. Yeah, we're giving you full credit for my eye. Yeah, we don't own the rights to that. We don't own the rights to that. We don't own the rights to it, and we're sorry if you heard it. Um, so this little um snake picture that's a Diamondback. That is a Diamondback rattlesnake. And I don't like the look of any snake. I don't like the look of gardener snakes, poisonous snakes, pythons. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't like them. I don't like. And snakes. I'm sure again. I'm sure again, and I'm sure that's why in the Bible they made the snake a bad guy. It's just a human biological evolutionary reaction that that we should not be around that. Like there's just an internal fear built into us from the days of yore that that is not good. That that snake is not a snake with venom dripping off his fangs. You should avoid. It's just like I I just and they slither. They do. They slither on the ground. They. I hate to, but I, I I'm jealous of snakes because they are all abs. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They're at the, from I neck mean, a, from neck down to ass. They all abs. That's it. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. They they obviously do a lot of work. They put in a lot. You know, they they got like good. a hundred pack or whatever it is. They just abs. <laughs> they do. They get. They have a hundred pack. And we we don't. I don't even have a one pack. I don't even have a leader. I don't have anything. There's some I pretty cool no looking abs. snakes. There's some cute. Co- there's some cool colored snakes. I gotta give them that. Well, anything in nature, like there's pretty colored everything's yeah. pretty much i mean usually i mean if you want to try to find one that you like that you're going to be like oh this one's cute i like this one that's fine i just am not going to agree with that so so you guys uh i i think these are like pretty basic ones yeah. i mean I, I i i can't think of what it is oh i'm getting a picture of a snake right now and you guys should we should put it out there he kind of looks like some kind of Funky 1970s yeah, belt that you would wear around your bell bottom jeans. That's a whole other episode <laughs> right there. <laughs> that would be a whole other thing. Um, so I'm interested um, if we have tens listening and you've uh, been nice and uploaded this episode. If you have something like send it to that email, I'd like to kind of follow up on this and find out if we can get other people's fears. Like what yes. are scary yes. things? Yes, tell what, us what your, your fears. Yeah, I mean, I'm the lady on the bus. You can tell me anything. I'm right? asking you. Yeah, I, I'll keep your secret until the next episode comes out. Eh, where we yeah, wink, 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 wink. I'll keep your secret. Wink, and then it will all come out, and I'll give you like your name will be Larry, and I'll say something like I won't say his real name, but Harry. You know, you always make it just kind of. It's, it's just like <laughs> sounds one, exactly like you just. <laughs> you go with something that's obviously so Larry's like oh my god everybody's gonna know that's me um and I, like that lady that those people they always bring on the Maury show the lady that's like afraid of olives or whatever 
Yeah, I, I really hope that we have somebody who has that. And a lady that was you know, afraid of balloons, something. and they just bring them out, and then she takes off face. <laughs> and Maury's dying laughing. He's losing his shit. I have a friend who talks in her sleep, and... That's funny. She, That's My ex-wife used to talk in her sleep all the time. <laughs> but it sounds real. Like, you don't... As the other person witnessing this, you, you can't really tell. It's like she had the sleepwalking, and her yeah. eyes would be open. And she would talk. And so one time, when we were teenagers, I was staying there staying the night in their attic bedroom thing. And she starts talking and she says to me, <gasps> you know, she does a scared noise. And I was reading old Hollywood magazines that her mom had from like the sixties. And this was the eighties. Oh, so they were, so classics. They, were old. they were classic. They were classic. So it was kind of fun. So she sits up and she's like, <gasps> and I'm like, what? what the fuck? She goes, she goes, I'm afraid. And I'm like, what are you afraid of? I thought she was awake. I yeah, thought we were yeah. having a real conversation. She goes, I'm afraid of the bacon. She was afraid of the bacon. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, okay. You don't All know right. how why, are, why are you afraid of the bacon? And she just she goes, never mind. And then that, she lays back down. And I'm like, what the fuck? I've had those conversations before with, with my ex-wife. She said some shit like that. I was like, I was like, babe, what? And she was like, never mind. And, yeah. then, went, and then never said another yeah, word. They, and I'm I'm stuck hanging, going. So the next morning, yeah, I would ask, I would dad, ask her too. I'm like, what the? Fuck? I was like, you know what you told me da- last night? Yeah, her dad is making breakfast and he's cooking bacon, and she walks by, and I went, ooh, scary. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? I said, aren't you afraid? And she's like, what are you? What are you talking about? I said aren't you afraid of the bacon? And she's like, what are you talking about? Like she's getting all irritated. I went, I went, no, hold on. What are you talking about? <laughs> when you scream <laughs> in the middle of the night and about give me a heart attack. And then you tell me you're afraid of bacon. She goes, I didn't do that. Then they always deny it. I didn't do that. Right. Yeah, you did. You did. So, so sleepwalking people are annoying and they're going to uh, deny everything. So get it recorded. We didn't have the recorders back in the admit, 80s. Like admit that. nothing, had, deny everything. We had like the big plastic ones with all the keys on the end that you looked like a piano. You couldn't push one without it going clunk and fucking. Oh, yeah, it would have woke her up. So it was it was the 80s. So yeah. we didn't have fancy little phone things. But she now records herself because she has a sleep app on her phone. So she gets snippets. And she finally does believe that she does indeed talk in her sleep. Yeah. I don't know if my ex still does it, down. but yeah, she used to do it all the time. I die laughing. I don't there's been a couple of times where I just remember myself laughing at what she said and I was like, fuck, I wish I had a notepad or something handy so I could at least write down what she said. And there was a couple of times I yeah, did, sometimes. but I've since lost the notepad. But I just remember I'm like, God damn, that's fucking hilarious. Because it doesn't it's nothing that makes sense. It's whatever's happening and they just blurt it out loud and you're like, the fuck did you just say? I don't know what it is, but it's funny as hell. My friend, another time I was there, same place, she sits up and her eyes are open. She goes, I'll have the Big Mac uh, order of fries and some Diet Coke, please. <laughs> she just ordered a meal. <laughs> and I was like, um, would you like ketchup with that? I mean, I was just like. Yeah, you just answer her like, back to see what back. the fuck's going to happen. Either they're going to wake said, up would or you say like something some crazy as shit and you're going to laugh. So. Yeah, she's like, would you like ketchup? I was like, would you like ketchup with that? And she's like, yes, please. And some sweet mustard. You know, she wanted the hot mustard or whatever. I'm like, Jesus. But here's the thing about McDonald's. This just reminds me, actually, we shouldn't say their names, about the place with the golden arches. Um, why don't they just give you ketchup? Like, why do they not Money. just throw some? Like, You think, oh, those are a I nickel? Hate- you think those are like two pennies a piece or whatever it costs them? But you got to think about how many meals they serve and how much ketchup they hand out. Now they used to not ask, but how much ketchup they hand up the hand out, it ends up never getting used. It helps them reduce their overall waste costs and how much money they throw out the door with the ketchup packets. That's why they also I, got stingy with ketchup. It's like, can I have some ketchup? And they're like, like yeah. Ketchup. And then it's like half of a ketchup packet. Okay, so here, here's the thing. For a normal person, like I don't eat ketchup that often, but I do like it specifically only with McDonald's fries. That's like my only time that I really like it. And I want the really hot, crispy fries from McDonald's, not the ones that have been under the lamp for 15 minutes. You know minutes. how you get you know, a trick around that? Limp. If you really want hot fries, tell them you want unsalted fries. fries. No, unsalted fries. And oh. they have to make them fresh. 
Okay. You have to, to wait, but then you can just salt them yourself. Perfect. And when they give me two packets, no. Ketchup for a large no. fry. You need 12. You need 12, minimum of 12. And that's only to get like a quarter of a cup, if that. Yeah. It's it's su- such a little amount in there. Four fries. Four fries for one bag. That's all you can do. Yeah. it's th- That's all you can get. There oh, was- look, we talked about food. Somehow we shoehorned ah! it in because your friend will blame your friend for this one. Yeah, it was her fault. There was a, I, there's a place I eat at, yeah. I don't know if y'all have them, called Taco Casa. No, but does that mean home, house of the taco? Pretty much. Taco house, whatever. Mm-hmm. However, I, I forget how sometimes the Spanish layers, it usually, it's, it depends, I think it depends on how the sentence is structured. I'm not sure for just a name. Anyway, mm-hmm. they have the, but my favorite, absolute favorite restaurant hot sauce like restaurant brand hot sauce it's not like out of a bottle it's their own their mm-hmm. own mix and it is my favorite hot sauce out of a packet and i will eat it on anything and everything if i have enough of it so one time i was going through this drive through and i wish i would have got the girl's name because this point i probably would have married her by now just by how much hot sauce she gave me because i can tell <laughs> that she's a generous woman and would care about the needs mm. of others and mm-hmm. uh and I saw I was going through the drive through and I looked her in the eyes and I was like, I want a lot of hot sauce. And then I looked at her again and I was like, and by a lot, I mean an amount that you would consider almost illegal. <laughs> and she gave me like a, a paper bag, like one of the tall paper bags. The bottom third of it was full of hot sauce. And I drove she away and I didn't, I didn't know her name. And I, I was going to say she was flirting with you. I got, I probably, and I'm too fucking stupid to realize it. So I know it's a lot of times men don't get when we don't, somebody's... we don't pick up on the subtle shit. Women think they're projecting cause they're not, they it's, it, they get it because they're producing the signal, but we're not set up for that. We don't, we're not set up for that kind of, well, it's confusing because some people, some women send signals that way. And some women don't. So yeah. it's like, you're always like, is this one? Well, and then it's like, I don't want to come onto a lady. And then all of a sudden I'm a fucking weirdo. So that's why well, a lot of men have to, to wait. The bus? That's why a lot of that's why a lot of men wait and don't ever pick up on a signal because it's like, well, nowadays if you say that shit, it's like he's a creeper. He came on to me. Well, yeah, fucking sorry. I mean, it hasn't happened to me, but <laughs> you hear about it all the time. It's like, well, fuck, I'm excuse me, okay, I won't think you're attractive anymore. Fuck out of my face, you ruined it now anyway. Well, you probably don't. You probably don't think they're attractive anymore after they do that. Yeah. I just, I kind of assume that everybody's always coming on to me because um, it's just easier to assume that and it's better for my ego. There you go. <laughs> it's just, oh, look, they, they said hi. They obviously want me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or they said, hey, bitch, get out of the way. And I think that means they like me. Like, hey, you know, just whatever. Just always think about things in a positive way. And then when they send you that weird, weird first message Very text detailed. that you're going to get. Yeah. Then that's when I get offended. <laughs> it's when they actually put forward 100% what they're really trying to say. Then I don't like that. I don't like that. I ruined just like the, when I'm assuming it. You ruined the illusion. Yeah. I did like, not I, need I to like see to, how the sausage was made. Yeah, I just liked it better when you said, hey, could you pass me the ketchup? Mystery. And I felt like you were in love with me. That there was, was some mystery. Now it's me. like, wow, that was, I did not, that, Yeah, we can close yeah, that up, the, we're the, good. Yeah, now that you've actually came 100% open with the fact that you are actually interested, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Thanks for ruining not. it, you ruiner. You're you big ruiner. We had yeah, a good thing I'm going. A big ruiner. In my mind, we had an we excellent had a, it thing going. It was a good thing going, and you had to ruin it by opening your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a few times. I've actually ruined a lot of relationships by just trying to communicate something simple. Fuck. And it's like, yeah, it's like, well, why did she have to talk? She was so nice before she talked. That's so like funny. a lot of times when I get those first messages where they're like, I want you to be my wife. Like it you says that in the it. first you know message. Yes, I want okay. you to be my wife. All right, deal. I want you to be my wife. And I'm like, and I, I write back, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. And I'm not saying that like like I'm not saying that to be coy or, or cute. No, I'm telling you that there's no way, especially if you wrote me that message, like if we were a couple and that's the kind of person that you are and I'm the kind of person that I am, I can tell you, you do not want me to be your wife because I would be way too hard on you. 
Like you would <laughs> you would not be up for all of this. No. It's just not even. So yeah, I want you to be my wife. That's because literally I'm a complete stranger to you and you've never had to deal with me. So of course you want me to be your you wife. Haven't had to, you haven't had to edit her audio for four hours. <laughs> See, you know for a fact that you do not want me to be your wife. Such a hassle. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Hassle I'm from the this far away of, already. Jesus. I'm, I can't I'm win them. I can't win them. I'm. I'm the high maintenance that thinks they're low maintenance. I'm oh, that that's one. the worst kind. I know. I'm like, I'm zero maintenance. It's like a I know Tesla. I'm, like a, I'm a low level of maintenance. <laughs> it's so easy. It a does everything level. itself. And then when it breaks, you're like, fuck, no one can fix it. It's it's a hot mess. And the spare parts happens. are astronomical and you can't find them. Yeah. I think it's really good to acknowledge that most people out there, you do not actually want them to be your wife or husband. Really. They're, they're, most of them, you you don't want the feeling that, oh, that they could be my wife or, oh, he'd make a great husband. No, because no, just no. Don't think about things that way. And never. At least not at first. Give freaking, it some time. Give it some fucking time. Write two messages before you say that you want someone. One guy was sending me that and then he was like, call me, call me. I need to talk to you about you being my wife. Okay. I was like, I need Deal. to. I need I was what the like, fuck oh, you think I was going to okay. answer? Hold on, I babe. Feel like what you're, what you... Yeah. I said, oh, so you want me to block you? And that's what I did. I'm like, I'm blocking you. That's real weird. So, so Say, uh, yeah, for fucking $100, I'll talk to you for 10 minutes. And and you can talk about me being your wife, and then I'm going to block you. No, it was just so weird. It's like, um, so I was apparently supposed to call him to make arrangements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah, that makes sense. Wife. Yeah, no, Perfectly no, normal. Whatever. I didn't like that. So, people. <laughs> so, hey, on Smartacular. Yeah, we're uh, creeping up on send, the hour. We're creeping up on the hour. And if you want to message me that you'd like me to be your wife, get prepared for a big old no as the response in the email. And I'm sure after this episode, I will get zero of those emails. Hey, and at least in the oh. email, you can actually make it a big no because you can edit the font size. You oh, can make perfect. it a big no. So, yeah. But other messages, other than that, Appreciated. we're totally going to read them. We're going to appreciate them. We're going to read them. We're going to send you a loving, well thought out response most of the time. Probably not. Or never. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on the day. I don't know. I don't want to commit to it. I don't yeah. want to commit to it. I don't know what they're, whatever. We're, we're undecided. But, you know, just send us something anyways and we'll see what happens. Because we're just here. So if, if we're going to be here, we might as well read your emails. So there's that. We're coming in right under the hour, and it's yeah. time for us to say goodbye. We hope you're not afraid of a lot of things. Yeah, and, we hope uh, you have very little fear in your life. That you have very little fear. One thing you shouldn't person. be afraid of, and this because of from someone speaking from experience, is don't be afraid of change. There we go. That's the one thing you shouldn't be afraid of. I, and that's the wise words probably the only one spoke this last hour that we're going to leave you with on today's episode. So you guys have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>